everyone. Welcome back. I'm Michael Sandler, your host on Inspire Nation, along with CJ Lou from the Fired Up with CJ Show. Woohoo! Okay, chakra four. Woo! <laughs> Excellent. Little spray of spray. Spray chakra four. If you've ever been bumped, bruised, or whacked by the universe in an attempt to get your attention, then do we have the kind, gentle, easy, good show for you? Oh, Today we'll no. talk about listening deeper, hearing guidance from the universe. And how to make great changes before, before CJ, it's all good, before the universe whacks you with a two by, two by four. That, plus we'll talk about Stephen Greer, Paul Selleck, Donna Eden, ducks, hawks, and deer, upgrades, empty nest again, holding back, touring grandparents, what's wrong with if it ain't broke, don't fix it, and what in world, roo-roo, honking on walks, has to do with anything. <laughs> So welcome back to the show, CJ. Are you ready to shine? I am ready to shine. Woohoo! Or, or what is he doing? What does he sound like when he's honking? <laughs> so he has a happy honk to him. And it only comes out when he's happy on walks where there's a lot of space. So if like you take him on a single track trail, which mm -hmm. we do a lot, he's, he's kind of nervous. As soon as you get to a wide open space, he might go. Oh, oh. And he's the only animal I know that will go to a beat. He'll do it like once every four steps or once every two steps. Um, except this week, Jessica and I were walking really close, romantically close to each other. And he started honking with each step. And then we would walk farther apart. And he would stop honking as much. And we'd go closer and back together. And he'd honk more. He loves us close together. And it was a really cool epiphany because he only honks when he's happy. I wonder, are chicken herd animals? They, they are flock animals. So he has his flock. He sees us as his flock. He wants to protect his flock and take care of his flock. Wow, and that probably makes him happy. It's part of, he probably wants, prefers being in a flock versus alone. Oh my God, yes. And seeing as he was uh, abandoned on the side of a road when we met him, he has abandonment issues. Uh, but I probably get to do some more clearing work with him. So like if you leave the RV or leave him behind, um, he uh, is not happy. Mm. He's, he's not thrilled with that at all, which is why we take him hiking. We take him We'll even take them in other parts of the country into Costco and other stores where they allow service animals. He's a registered service animal. But uh, here in New Jersey, I think uh, that'd be a bit much. He's emotional support for me, and I'm emotional support for him. <laughs> <laughs> how do, what are the qualifications for a service animal? Is that it? And how, did, what, how do you register? Well, you can get emotional service animal. You, you go to a psychologist, and, and they evaluate whether he's of benefit to you. Um, and whether that would be something that's, that would help your emotional state. And he is a calming effect in our lives, even though when he trips into screaming mode, he is the opposite. But he calms us down. He calms everybody around us down. He is, if you brought him into a hospital, if somebody was needing healing, oh my God. Would the smile come over their face? Does he change the entire energy in the room? It is the coolest thing. I'll have managers in stores where they're okay with him, come running up, take pictures, want to ask questions, want to stay by his side, hanging out. He has this energy about him. It's really magical. Wow. He's, he's not just a rooster. I mean, that would be enough if he was just a rooster. But he has a special sacred energy to him, which is just wild. Yeah. But he is both a rooster, so he has his own rooster quirks, rooster needs, rooster crows. And he was abandoned, and so he does not like being left behind, period. So other parts of the country, I'll take him shopping with me, not on the East Coast and outside of New York City. Okay. <laughs> Wait, so you're doing clearing work on him? What does that look like for a chicken? Like, how do you know what is or is the anatomy the same? Like, how do you clear a chicken? So you you can do a uh, clearing work on a rooster, and, and he would say, I'm a rooster, not a chicken. And Sorry, rooster. Excuse me. Apologies. But, but um, you can do it. Uh, I use a variant, which is what a strange word to use right now, off of uh, Dr. Bradley M. Nelson's emotion code combined with some other techniques where I'm going to go in and um, I'm going to find the wounds and blocks on an energetic level, and then I'm going to... Uh, basically electrically or magnetically clear them 
go over the top of my head, for instance, and clear them and then try to see what's next. And I do a lot of muscle testing along with it. Some of it, I might be catching real stuff. Some of it, who knows? But overall, it makes a difference. Wow, interesting. So, so you do surrogate tapping or surrogate energy work? Or? Yeah, it, it, works, it works on all animals. Wow, so interesting. So we've done it on our kitties. It's made a difference in their, in their health and their appetite. Wow. Um, so you can do energetic clearing work on on any spirit in any sort of physical form. You could do it on an amoeba if, if you wanted to. Okay, we need you to do a show on this, Michael, because <laughs> I think yeah, everyone cool. would want to know how to do it. Wow. Okay. <laughs> all right. So you've got you've got Rue going, and what's what's all this uh, getting? What is this two by four? This bruise oh. whacked. What's happening, Michael? So we've had multiple guests on the show that have similar messages. Dr. Stephen Greer was on the show, and he's a, a, a UFO expert. Yes. Uh, that was just a phenomenal show. And we took a very positive take of how you use this process called CE5, Close Encounters 5. It's an app as well to be able to uh, communicate with more advanced civilizations. And, um, and Paul Selig, he's communicating with the guides, and they both had similar messages, which is... We live in a time where fear, <laughs> Stephen Greer says that, that the advanced civilizations would say on a scale of civilization growth from level one to 10, humanity is at a level zero. Mm. <laughs> and and uh, I think of, I always laugh because I think of Kung Fu Panda after he first goes through his trials in front of um, his, his sensei and he completely you know, blows up and smoldering on fire, beaten up. And the sensei says there is now a, or Sifu says there's now a level zero. And humanity is at a level zero where we learn by fear and we learn by pain. It right. is the lowest energy way to learn. And for advanced civilizations, there are a better way. The mm -hmm. guides say you go to the upper room, there is a better way. We can make a shift right now that we don't have to learn by getting whacked by the universe. You look I at see. COVID, you look at all of these changes challenges out there we have not been listening and are out of balance mm -hmm. if we take the time to listen and put space into our lives and focus on how do i hear spirit better how do i live a more spirit based life then we may not need the answers from the cosmic whack of the two by four mm -hmm. fact I'm going to try to pull something up. There was a prayer that came out of my automatic writing this morning. And I don't know if I will be able to find it or not. But let's see if I can. Because there was a beautiful statement that came up this morning. Hold on here. Let's see if I can pull this up. Our, uh, angels, guides, and light workers. Please help me to learn from a place of love rather than fear, mm. a place of joy rather than play, pain, and a place of ecstasy rather than sorrow. Mm, nice. So this is uh, something that you made up or how, where, where did you it get It came this? out of automatic writing. So I, each morning mm. I go into my automatic writing and I get a teaching from the universe. Uh -huh. uh, in fact, I didn't even put on here. You should ask me about Egyptian mirrors. Okay. Really cool that came out this week. So I'm in school with the guides each and every morning. In fact, they're challenging me to be in school with them three times a day. Wow. This week, multiple days, I got in at least twice. I haven't gotten to three for myself. I do when I teach. I'll go in at an additional time and they'll give me the whole teaching. Right. But I'm going to school and each day they will have a different teaching for mm. me. And so today's teaching is what we're talking about here which is there is another way to learn. It doesn't have to be, well, I, I, you've had past life regressions. I've had past life regressions. I'm, and one of them, it's, it's a hypnotherapy session where you go to uh, other side of the veil, for instance. Mm -hmm. And for myself, one of them, I'm in front of council of elders before this lifetime. And uh, they said, what do you want to learn? And I said, give me the works. And they're like, well, you can't handle the works. I'm like, I want the fastest spiritual growth possible. Give me the works. And I came here and had injury after injury, after heartache, after heartache, after injury, after injury, and so forth. 
because humanity tends to learn at that base level of fear and pain mm -hmm. until I renegotiated it and now am being taught how to renegotiate this through awareness, through a prayer like this. Angels, mm -hmm. guides, and light workers, please help me to learn from a place of love rather than fear, a place of joy rather than pain, a place of ecstasy rather than sorrow. Mm. So that I'm saying, all right, I don't need to learn the hard way because I am going to be more prescient. I'm going to be more present and looking and listening for the signs and symbols of everything. Yeah, you know, it's funny because um, um, I've told you, I, you know, I've had all these physical problems over the last, yeah. and I think we talked about it last week, and then I talked to my chiropractor who's an energy worker slash like 20 other things, um, but he had said that he'd been noticing that people were going through a transformation, like they're literally going through, a, we're going through, the universe is bringing us events like COVID, um, as a way for us to apply external pressure for us to um, transform and to be move more towards he called it his non like moving from our non self to our self but I I would say from some of the materials I'm reading is is moving I was reading um, in information on integral and it's about uh, moving integrating from moving from our egoic self to our soul self, our higher self. And so it's forcing us to move through this this transformation. And I think I told you, you'd said that when you're moving through this transformation, you have to let go of things so that new things can come in. And... Um, and it was, it, and I, it really, that helped me so much because I've been going through and I know that a, a lot of the physical pains that I'm having are a result of some type of, tr you know, um, transformation of some sort, but I don't understand exactly what's being transformed, why it's happening. And, you know, I'm in like every day there's some, probably some pain that I'm experiencing, right? Whether it's my ankle, yesterday my back went out, like it's just every, probably every day there's something, hives, like. Well, I'm gonna be experiencing a little bit of this, yeah. the universe speaking to us. Yeah, and, and, and it's interesting because uh, I thought I was, it's so easy to go like, oh my gosh, when is this gonna end? How long is this going to be? Why does this hurt again? It's so, so easy to go there and after talking to him, like, okay, I'm transforming, I'm getting upgraded. And yeah. so how can I put this in a different lens? The fear lens is, oh my gosh, I'm in fear. I'm going through these transmutations. I'm scared. I need to go do something and allow, you know, and so it goes in this big circle. And if you go into the operating system of love, you know, this one mindset is a fear that you're talking about. If you go into the mindset of love, it's like, oh, well, I'm, I'm actually really happy that this is happening because it means that my body is being upgraded so that I can, I can hold more light, which will help everyone. And, you know, it means that I also am going to feel some pain as all these things are being shed. So it's like, I'm shedding. This is great. So it's just like a different, same thing happening. But, you know, the, the operating system moving from fear and like, I got to go get something, I go make something happen versus, oh, this is great. This is great. And, and, and the thing that I've been contemplating a lot, this is great. And I really, I can, I can do things to facilitate things so that they, the transition happens more smoothly. You know, I think what you're, another way of saying is just like, you know, we have a mindset or an operating system and are we shifting our operating system from fear and doing to love and watching? Because if something is being done for us, for our benefit, how can we just move into, it doesn't mean that there isn't pain. I mean, it still hurts every day something hurts, but it's that, that actually helped me such a great deal. And, and, you know, when I'm meditating right now, I'm doing something, a meditation from the Bon, um, Bon tradition, um, which is a Tibetan tradition. That's kind of a combination of like Tantra and Buddhism and, um, and, uh, it's a lot of chanting and I've been doing this meditation where you, um, connect to your guru or lineage 
Um, it could be the sun. It doesn't have to be like human beings or some guy from Tibet. It could be, you know, spirit animals. You're just connecting to this higher upper room. So you connect to the upper room, I would say, and, and I, I, I don't know. No, I, I think that that's what I know. I don't know Paul Selig would be mad at me. But <laughs> let's say you connect in an upper room where every it's infinite and things are spaciousness and they're made out of light. And um, there are guides there to help you. Um, but you go and you firmly believe like everything, I'm here to be supported. And you, it's about having faith and trust that the universe is there to support you. And then you go through this whole process of um, imagining that there's white light pouring from these um, higher beings coming down into you. Yeah, and then you imagine that you bring people that you love, and it's a bodhicitta, which means you bring people that you love into the circle, and you imagine that that same light that's showering over you is showering over them. And then um, you just you just open up into this um, upper room with these other people with you. So I've been doing is thinking about all these people in COVID and just like bringing them into the upper room as well as like close friends of mine, as well as people who, um, you know, are, are struggling with what to do with the vaccination, whether it's to take it or not take it or be mad with people who are, you know, whatever it is, I just bring the vaccination stuff into the meditation and I just sit there and and uh, just be in white light and uh, and then you imagine that the white light is healing everyone for whatever they're going through and, and it's really not you doing anything it's you the only thing that you're doing is opening to the upper room and and um, and pl- you know placing the intention that you would like these other people to be healed and that you you trust that they're going to do the right thing, whoever these people, and then it basically comes and, and comes over you. And, and it's interesting when I've been doing this and you just rest. Sometimes I'm so exhausted um, that I just lie there on the ground. And, and when I do that, I am beginning to feel like inject, it's like a light injection. Like I feel, you know how like when you have a shot, someone takes a thing and they, they take the syringe and they go down. I swear it's like someone is coming and injecting light down my central channel. And it's like, it's, it's like, um, I don't know, like when you go to Hawaii and you smell the plumeria and you're like, oh, <gasps> you know, like that kind of thing, because it's just so breathtakingly beautiful. It's like that. And so this has been happening to me. And and I think there's a correlation of this light and then pain, actually, on the other side of it. That's the well, stuff you that's... You the term injection. Yeah, <laughs> this is, it's pain on the other... I mean, it's beautiful, and it's like light is flowing down there. And then that night I had hives all over my body and, like just like pain and hives all over the body. Yeah, it's like a purification. And so I think that we're being purified too, right? If we choose to be purified, it's a purification. And so all these life experiences coming from the outside are purification, right? And it doesn't feel good sometimes. No, so. it's, it's making me think, going back to Stephen Greer, he was talking about how if we get just 1% of humanity that comes together, you get a critical mass in how you can have a wave of change. And if we can stop viewing uh, things that we label as negative or things that we label as bad or things that we give any sort of label, and we can come up with, like you're describing, a different way of looking at it, certainly bringing the light to it, I believe that will do more to shift consciousness and shift what's going on in the planet than anything else that we're doing because there is there is not going to be a physical solution in in my guess my humble opinion no physical solution to many of these challenges it's going to take an energetic solution yeah and and that means a shift in consciousness but we can do that that's that's the cool thing i keep coming back to it's 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 a terrible awful but fun twisted adage which is the the beatings will continue until morale improves it means the beatings will continue until morale improves, meaning you have to choose the other side. Yeah. And then everything shifts. You will not get there by trying to butt your head up against what is. Yeah. And pushing against it and fighting against it and tormenting yourself and others because you are trying to make something happen. That doesn't mean that you just sit around and, like, you know, sit on no. your couch and eat Cheetos all day. 
although Cheetos are fantastic. Um, that, that does sound dumb. <laughs> uh, I haven't had a Cheeto in, in a good 20 years. But that does oh, they have dumb. healthy ones made out of, like, there's a skull called, like, Chick Boom Boom or something like that that's, like, all made out of beans, and they're delicious. So that's a, that's a little plug for that. There's there a are, sponsorship opportunity. Yeah, exactly. There are healthy Cheetos out there. I'm eating them, and I'm in love with them. Okay. <laughs> so um, so did, did Donna Eden say the same thing? I mean, what, what was her take on it? Her take is that is everything is an energy game. And she was talking about how we can really, as individuals, clear the channels of stuck energy inside of us mm-hmm. and how that gets the energy flowing. And a lot of those pains, a lot of those aches goes away. You, you clear the channels for your lymphatic system and you have a, a much stronger immune system, either an ability to keep from getting sick or an ability to recover faster or get rid of that brain fog. So she was playing it all on an energetic game because we know a lot of people who've had COVID who they struggle to come back. And so Mm. it's about playing the energetic game and that a lot of our fears, worries, and concerns, if we get the energy moving inside of us, we can dial that down. And where that becomes important is that we are energetic beings having an energetic experience in in physical or in human form. Mm -hmm. Energetic beings having an energetic experience, but in human form. If we ignore human form, if we go, oh, I'll just think puppies and roses or kitties and roses. And what Michael's saying is we go to the upper room and we completely ignore. No, we work on the physicality. We work on moving the energy. Mm -hmm. We work on what we have as this temple that we're carrying with us. Mm -hmm. And that helps the shift. That's why, for instance, a COVID, if we look at it, and I'm not making light of this, Please, nobody, am I making light of this? But if we look at it as a, as both a harbinger and as a being. Mm-hmm. If we look at the virus as consciousness, as an element of consciousness, because if we understand God is, then everything is. Then there there is a meaning behind everything. And part of the meaning of why we're experiencing physical virus, you know, it could have been a virus that attacks every computer worldwide. But no, it came to our physicality because we get to embody at the same time we get to raise up. Yep. It's not one or the other. Well, it's interesting because my I don't know. I know for me, as I've been upgrading, I've been like physically changing. And I was I was talking to my chiropractor yesterday because I was getting, like I said, my back was thrown out. I couldn't even, I was like, oh my God, I almost couldn't walk here, <laughs> that kind of thing. And he said... Yeah, I said, well, is everyone going through this? And he said, well, you know, people who choose to, like, they're going through something. And um, some people are, like, having emotional catharsis. Some people are having, you know, they're having other kinds of things going on, not just physical. For me, it's physical. So, and and what what I, I was reading yesterday at 3.33 when I woke up. I was Very like, cool. I was told like, get up. And I'm like, oh, and then I was like, what is it? <laughs> and it's like, do I have a spiritual message? Yes. Okay. What is it? It's, okay. Is it about this, 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 a muscle testing? And it's like, okay, it's about this. It's an article that I had read about um, spiritual um, transformation. And um, yeah, they were talking about all these kinds of transformations that you go through. So, so I think I, I, whether we choose to accept or not, fight it or not it's happening regardless so I think it's it's in some ways it's like it's not about doing things but facilitating its transition so you know whether you get chiropractor you do meditation you do the energy clearing that Donna is suggesting if 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 you're trying to get purified or cleanse your energy is being cleansed there are things that you can do to help it along the way so I think that that perhaps is just another way of looking at the same thing um it's it's interesting you use the term facilitate the transformation because I, I saw a chiropractor too this week, mm-hmm. which is is fairly rare for me. But I found this amazing chiropractor who does this technique in South Dakota. He does uh, and it, the techniques everywhere. It's art, active release therapy. Mm-hmm. And and I found it very helpful at getting through some stuff that I hadn't been able to get through to, mm. to get the body really moving at its best and getting things back into symmetry because I've had a lot of injuries in the past. Mm -hmm. And so I went to a practitioner locally who had a very different philosophy. His philosophy was, if it ain't broke, 
don't fix it. Mm. Because when you do, when you pull on that string, a lot of stuff is going to unravel. Mm. And I appreciate and respect that. But I actually go the other direction. Mm -hmm. Like you said, to facilitate the transformation, we actually have to lean into it and allow the upgrades to take place and seek them. Right. And so I am seeking that professional to help me. All right, things are working well now. I am having, like you, some aches and pains, particularly this week. It's interesting. Um, but I want to facilitate the transformation rather than to sit back and see what happens after a while. Yeah. I want to be proactive about that. Yes. And those are the things we can do, I think. I mean, those well, are positive. Doing. Yeah, those, those are, are really positive. Doing. And unless anything taken to extreme, sort of like the person who says, I want to eat healthier. Awesome. Great. The person who says, oh, I won't touch that. I won't touch that. I won't touch it. Now we're coming from a place of fear or, or neurosis and we've got too much of a doing. And we go back to the other side where we're actually hurting rather than helping ourselves. Yeah, it's that whole um, Stitka and uh, the effort and ease that they have in, yes. in yoga. It's like you, you want to have ease, but then also there is some effort. But like how much efforting isn't – and it's a very tricky thing. Like how much efforting is and, – and I was reading this article yesterday at 3.33. But they were talking about, you know, there's like – there's efforting, which is like I'm trying to jump in now and like try to f fix things and like move things forward because I'm really doing the job of moving things forward versus like, okay, this is moving through me and what can I do to be more comfortable? You know, it's like fluffing the pillow um, versus like – I'm going to do self-surgery on myself to see if I can fix this and, and that there's something wrong that I need to go fix. Like there's just a different kind of mentality. So it's, it's very hard to know where you are on the spectrum and, and it's about accepting, allowing, opening, and at the same time facilitating, but not too much. It's a very, and, and I think what that line is probably varies for every single person. Find the flow, Luke. Find yeah. the flow. Well, yeah, yeah. Where is that state? Because like Saturday, and that may be why my body has still been sore, I went out for my longest, hardest bike ride, in, and which has been coupled on longest, hardest bike ride, longest, hardest bike ride, and, and in a good decade. And, mm. and it was awesome. And I'm going in one sense as hard as I possibly can for about four hours. On the other hand, I'm in this blissful flow state mm. where I just feel like I'm doing an effortless dance. And so you look for that line. Where is the cadence in life or whatever I'm doing where I know I'm going, uh -huh. but it doesn't feel like I'm going against anything. Mm. It reminds me of yesterday because I'm trying to get my heart rate out. And um, I was running and I thought I I'm going, I'm trying to run. Like I had a really good run where my heart rate was in the like high peak zone, um, according to Fitbit and I was trying to do that again and I just couldn't and I wanted to keep on pushing myself and I'm like I just can't today like and thank God I didn't because I had my back that almost went out as a result of running in the first place but you know and had I pushed myself that extra little bit um, I would have probably amounted to like a, a probably not being able to walk I mean as, as it was it was very hard like I could I had to like bend down very carefully those kinds of things so and, and that's what we're talking about. Today, yeah. Is it's the bike rides. I go out on these ferociously hard bike rides and, and, and I have all my delusions of grandeur of how fast I'm getting. It's all good. It's all fun. But I will go out for a bike ride and here's what I'm doing and here's where I'm going. And then I'll find myself at some point going, hot oh, crap. And I'll just turn <laughs> the bike right around. I'm doing it again. <laughs> the, the bike, I will listen. And if my body says, no, you're done, stop. I go, bummer, but my mind wants to keep going, and I will turn the bike right around, and I will listen. Yeah, it's so hard to do. Right like, you know, home. you've had so many instances of where you didn't, right, that you're like. Oh, yeah. I ha so by That's holding back. we're talking about Yeah, today. so holding back, because I had, for me, my equivalent is like in, in the mind, right? So we're going through these PowerPoint reviews for this class, upcoming class, that um, is Hopefully, gonna I, 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 gotta, I gotta stop you for a second. You said you weren't going to do a PowerPoint presentation. No, okay, so, no. And, I, and I, then I got an email from you saying, "Do you have any PowerPoint slides you can recommend?" No, no. I'm going, oh no. No, what happened is there was we were doing these slides, and I said we need to do. I, I think it would be helpful to do some slides on the body, because you know we're talking about like the mind and the heart, but what about the body? And and it's the gal said, "Well, can you actually suggest a few slides?" And I was like. 
all right, how can I do this with minimal effort possible? And because uh, I really, so, so I thought uh, Michael may have something. And then I actually found like two or three slides with like, you know, I did one on epigenetics and one about the mind, but you know, anyway, so I, so, but it was interesting because we went through the slide review and, um, and I thought, well, you know, she did such a, you know, the gal who did it, she, cause I said, I don't want to do anything with the slide review. It makes me crazy. I'm really good at reviewing slides and saying what's missing, what's not. That's the best role for me. And uh, I'm not a good creator. I'm a better guide to look and then see what's going on. And uh, yesterday we went through the slides and I wanted again, I, I had to hold myself back because I think I should just like, you know, she did such a good job and like working so hard and putting these, I should go for the second round of this. And I was like, don't say anything. Don't do anything. Stop yourself. Now. It's like the equivalent of your bike ride. I'm like, there you go again. <laughs> there you go again. Didn't you say you were going to do PowerPoints? If you go and do these PowerPoints, you're kind of sending a very weird message. So do not do any PowerPoints. But it's it's equivalent, right? Like, you know, it's like the old you is like, oh, no, go, 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 Mike, go, Michael, just go go ahead and ride the extra mile or CJ, just go spend another three hours fi fine tuning those PowerPoints. I'm like, nope, not going to do it. <laughs> I, so I was really proud of myself and this is giving me more strength to like hold to my conviction, but it's, it's really hard to hold back. And, and I had another thing that's kind of related to this on the flip side is like, say something. It's like holding back and then saying something. Because oftentimes I hold back and I don't say something or you make excuses. So um, someone had, um, we, someone wanted to um, have me, someone said, would you like to go do this thing? And I really didn't want to go. Um, I'm trying to, okay, so we, um, so I basically genericized version. I mean, I'm trying to figure out how to say it without the person knowing exactly who it was when I said this to. They're not it even was listening this to this show. But that's, that's this alien you know. said to me, "There was this extraterrestrial you met on the street who invited you." <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I said to them, "Well, and and so you know, part of it is like you, like the old me, would have made excuses, like, oh." I have a meeting, even though I may not have had a meeting or um, said, um, thrown the thing on something else. Oh, I need to go help X and Y, Z. You know, I need to go help my kid because Bob, so I can't do it. Um, and, and I was like, but those are all not even true. And so you have to speak your truth and kindly. And I just said, you know what, um, I can't go because... I know I originally said this, but I can't do it because I reckon, and I realized that doing that is really going to stress me out um, because it was hard yesterday when I did try to do this yesterday, and I don't think I should try to do it again. So I'm sorry, I can't do this. And it's so hard. It's very, very hard when you're a socialized being to actually speak your truth because you're expecting all sorts of like, you know, repercussions. But it, 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 I think that part of what we're asking we're being asked to do is to lead our lives from that kind of place of standing up to our truth even if the truth may not be received well but not to do the socialized thing which is like you know you know oh I can't because I have something going on or you know even because those things are not true and they don't really get to the real thing which is I was really stressed the last time and I can't I'm sorry, I can't do it. And it just felt so much better to do it, even though I was fearful that it could hurt someone. But it was operating from that, going back, operating from a place of love of myself and the other person because they needed to hear, like, that was not good for me. And for and here's why. And can we do something else? It wasn't like I don't want to see you ever. Get, it was just like we need to try something else aside from that. And you're operating from integrity with love. That's huge. You're operating from a higher energetic level, which brings you up. And even if the response isn't desired, brings everyone up over time. And as you said, it's about what message you send to the universe. Am I taking care of my needs? Yeah. If I am, the universe helps me take more care of my needs. If I'm not taking care of the needs, then the universe might go and go, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> now do you want to 
going to take care of your needs. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. So, so you yeah. chose that upper room. You chose that higher energetic highway. Yeah. You listen. What did um, Paul Selig say about, aside from going to the upper room, I know he has this new book out. What were some of the other key takeaways from, from your conversation with him? Wow. So, so it's always challenging for me to put myself back in another interview. Um, with that said, it was really a time of, um, I think you had mentioned uh, shedding skin or something earlier. It's a time of shedding our skin. Mm. It's a time of letting go. It's a time where everything that we have labeled uh, I mean, one one of the guide's favorite expressions um, is what you damn damns you back. Uh, and and what that means not only is if you say something negative about something, <laughs> there's an instant karma that comes to you. But what it is, is if you put something and label it and put it in a box, you are labeled and put in a box as well. Uh, and this is a time where we have to drop all labels, all um all assumptions of what is good, what is bad, what is right, what is wrong, what do I want, and let go of all of it to get lighter to be able to ascend to that next energetic level, mm. what is called the upper room. And a big part of it, he said, when we're talking about manifestation, it's no longer about manifesting from the I. I want the ice cream, I want the car, I want the girl or the boy or the whatever, the I, I, I. And it now has is time to come into a new collective agreement. And he says that everything that you see around you is a collective agreement. The war is a collective agreement on some level, on some spiritual level. None of us are saying, oh, I want war. Maybe some are, but most aren't. But there's a collective agreement. Mm -hmm. And the collective agreement now is part of it is we go from that individualistic I, I, I to the we state and we're seeing that in the olympics which is really cool because mm -hmm. i geek out on this kind of sport we're seeing a lot of weirdness taking mm -hmm. place the two mm -hmm. pole vaulters you know do you want to, to fight and continue in your pole vaults because you're in a dead heat or do you want two gold medals we'll take the two and just hug and love each other up yeah that is part of this transition and so we get to let go of all of the interpretations and judgments Mm -hmm. of everything we see around you. Let go of everything in a sense that we feel we need. We can still have likes. If you go out for ice cream, get your chocolate versus vanilla. I've been having the darndest time on the East Coast finding the non-dairy ice cream, but get your non-dairy ice cream if you can find it. So, but it is about letting go, shedding, and allowing yourself to ascend. Mm -hmm. And, and he does have a clearing statement. Let's see if I get that right. Or a, a attunement, because everything is frequency and vibration. Uh, I know who I am in truth. I know what I am in truth. I know how I serve in truth. I am free. I am free. I am free. And that helps you rise beyond the thinking mind, beyond the egoic mind, to the upper room. I know who I am in truth. I know uh, what I am in truth. I know how I serve in truth. I'm free, I'm free, I'm free. And then it continues. The latest two are, I have come, I have come, I have come, meaning I am in that upper room. Mm. And then the last statement now is God is, God is, God is. Mm. Which means the recognition that everything, we can't cherry pick, Everything is here to serve us. Everything is part of this beautiful dance. And you can't say this bad, this horrific. This is great. This is awesome. You can still have preferences. And he would say you still have prudence. If you go to cross the road, don't go, God is. And just cross the road <laughs> without looking both ways. Because then you're going to be going back to God even sooner. <laughs> All right, I almost spit coffee all over my setup here, Michael. <laughs> that's good. Oh, my gosh. That's really good. I love Paul Selig. All right, so what does this have to do with ducks, hawks, and deer? Because always animals come to you as, they, like, they, harbingers. We, we went out uh, paddling on the kayak last week, and um, – it, it's it's just been beautiful on the water here. We're just outside New York City, and it's peaceful, it's bliss, oh. it's super quiet, and we're listening. And in listening, all of these special animal experiences come to you, or you come to these animals. And I'll just share one uh, for, for time's sake right now. We're paddling back. We're like, Jessica has this expression called barn fever. 
which means that you know if she run if she goes on a run and she's going at a 10 minute mile on the way out she's doing a six minute mile on the way back wow if we go out paddling at you know um i don't know five minutes for a 500 on the way back it's two and a half minutes for a five wow she, she's a sprinter and when she sees the finish line she's going but we're paddling back and both of us heard something just as faint as like a tree branch breaking along the shore and we immediately stopped paddling I put the back oar in, kind of kicked the kayak around. We kind of drifted to shore. And after a few minutes, a buck appeared at the water's edge to drink. Oh, nice. Two little baby white spotted oh. fawns oh. came out to drink. I know, it was that oh. cute. Oh, sweet. Wow, from it's, that, wow. From that, let's stop and listen. We got out of that doing state, mm -hmm. dropped right out of it, out of warp speed with the kayak. And that's that's where the game of life, that's that's where the fun is, is having that awareness. I, I've been challenging myself if I watch a movie or something lately, watch out of the peripheral. Don't watch what's directly going on in the action. What's going on off on the wings, off to the sides to expand my awareness of everything going on around me that's where life is being played not right in this myopic focus of the getter done world for instance yeah you know the um in that meditation i was telling you about there is one in which you imagine your your guides are shining white light in your mind and you're just like dropping all the thoughts down and then there's um to still your body and then it's um, you imagine red light coming through your throat to to stop your voice, and then you imagine blue light coming into your heart to you know rest in the um, and to stop the minds the kind of busy mind. So it's body slow like still the body, stop the voice, still the mind, and then you just drop into that space. And it's where that's where all the action is happening. All the action is happening in yeah. your heart in the still quiet place if but it's so hard to get there it's so hard to get there but when you do get there that's where these light injections where the deers and I don't know if that's when the hawks and ducks came along but that's where that's where it's all at <laughs> it's it's so hard to get to and it takes yeah meditation over and over and over again until you can get to that place but when you get to that place there is no more serene better place to get to and you don't have to be kayaking you can just be you can be on a busy street and get to that place if you keep on practicing getting to and knowing how to take that journey in it just takes effort and energy and it and it happens <laughs> So let's let's go to the last thing I see on our list here for today. Yeah. Uh, and 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 getting to that place again of empty nesting. Yeah. So you have your touring your grandparents and we're in empty nesting. Oh, oh, so yeah, yes. Yeah. So um, it's all about family. And so um, my son is launching on the 20th to his new apartment. He starts his job on Monday, my eldest. And my youngest son is going to be um, going back to the East Coast on Wednesday. And then I'm going to be flying out to um, go to the Bruce Lipton event in Taos. So I think that's Taos. Is that right? Is that, yeah. Um, I believe so. Yeah. And so, yeah, so we're all kind of, this time I'm flying out of the nest as well. <laughs> So, yeah, so it's um it's really interesting. I mean, it it's this summer has been so nice because it's a rare opportunity. I don't think normally, I mean, my child would normally be what one is returning back to live in Seattle. The other one is had an internship in North Carolina, but it was remote, so he's been home the whole time. And god, what a rare opportunity to it's very seldom at this age that you get to spend so much time with your children because you're usually like in, they see you for a couple of days and they're out with their friends. You know, they're this this kind of like, you, you see them in little slices, not enough to really drop in and get to know who they are as people. But again, the COVID has presented opportunities that we really know these kids and they've shifted so much in just like a year or two. It's just wow. been extraordinary. So if it's believe, I mean, it's hard to believe, but I feel even closer to these kids than I did before. I mean, it's just a, it's amazing, you know, 
because we were really, really close before, and now I feel even closer. So it's always hard to see them go. But, you know, as our young son has returned back to Seattle, it's like, you know, they come back and they're meant to go. And I can see the problems when they don't go, you know. So I'm, I'm, I really think even when my son was stuck in his, he was in his dorm the entire time. And he may be back going to um, school. He's at Johns Hopkins. He may be at Johns Hopkins again, stuck in his dorm. And it was like a little mini prison, oh, wow. frankly, there. So he may spend another semester. And he's actually now mentally prepared, if that happens, that it will happen. Um, so there's this kind of fortitude that has developed with our kids, yeah. which this kid is, this generation is the most spoiled generation ever. Like their parents, their parents are like concierge service, like, so to have like this kind of hardship for this generation has been in some ways a good thing. Like this is the hard, hardest hardship you can ever imagine a kid having to go through. Um, as my friends from Serbia say, it could be worse. Like they could be in war zones. And But I mean, for American parents, this is probably one of the hardest things is to watch your kids go through this COVID thing. And they'll live through it and they'll be fine. And it's ha still hard. It's the same thing that we're talking about, right? If you can just see from the perspective of love what's happening, it's kind of showing them that stuff happens and, and that none of us have control of, even your parents, and, and you'll live through it. So And helping shift or shed the old way of beingness. I, yeah. I, 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 said it, I said it before COVID fully took over here, and I get to even rephrase it. I said there's a before COVID world and after COVID world. Now I guess there's a before COVID world, and then there's just a new world. Mm -hmm. and, and the new world is going to have a lot more shedding to come and a lot more uh, letting go of this. And yeah. so what your son is learning and what the new gen is having to learn, we're all having to learn, is resilience. And yeah. that reframing becomes so important because if you, if you frame something as this is the most awful thing in the world, you're right, it is the most awful thing in the world. If you frame it as something beautiful can come out of this, you're right, something beautiful can come out yeah. of this. Yeah. Well, you know, it used to be like... The, the college years are the four best years of your life because you're like free and you're like having loads and loads of fun, right? Um, from what I can tell from like super competitive schools, um, as my kid said, like there's a certain percentage, like maybe 30%, perhaps 20% that that's true, but the remaining 70, 80% that's not true anymore. Yeah. So, you know, it's like, yeah, yeah, these may not be the best years of your life and... And for if you're at one of these competitive schools and um, even and and it's OK, like there's other things like my son would not be able to work remotely for two days out of the week, which he's I, I worked remotely at Microsoft for two days out of the week 10 years ago. And I had to go through all sorts of shenanigans to get that. Like it was like a yeah. special privilege only given to a few. So now everyone at the company like that would have never have happened. He's meeting a bunch of different people that aren't from Microsoft now because he wants to, you know, start his social life. And he's forced to meet his neighbors in his apartment building, which would have never happened. So and there's all sorts of things happening that would never have happened without COVID. Bringing it back to, to the grandparents. Yeah. Touring around with Jessica's parents and we're, we're touring around, we're having special experiences. All of this closeness... I think is coming about because of the situation, not despite it. And yeah. we, we've gotten a chance to take Jessica's parents out to a bunch of places in New Jersey that they've lived here uh, ever since they, they uh, emigrated, immigrated from uh, China and Taiwan uh, 40 plus years ago, almost 50 years ago. And they're seeing the world uh, new now. That's great. Yeah, and they and, wouldn't have done that. They probably wouldn't have been like, they've been like, oh, go ahead, do it. But now they're like, okay. Where have you taken yeah. them? Uh, we, we've taken them kayaking, to, you said. Uh, yeah, so um, Monksville Reservoir, hmm. Split Rock Reservoir, um, and some trails in Northern Green State Park, and some other trails. Um, I can't even remember the other state park we've been to. So we're just getting them out and exploring. I even took them accidentally. Forgive me if I share the story. I think it was this past weekend to a two weeks ago. We went to a, a sushi restaurant on on a creek. That was amazing. So last weekend we went out and and my 
my father-in-law sneakily managed to get the bill and you know, we have a competition between us a good asian dad and 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 he faked me out uh, this this weekend i had my revenge but we went to a thumping hip hop sushi place accidentally. <laughs> what is that? And, and, and so I've I've got my 80 year old um, uh, uh, Chinese father in law who at first he said he was okay with it and he is a bit hard of hearing. But and, and, and then later on he turns to the waitress and he goes something to the effect of this would be a great restaurant, but because of the sound, this is my worst restaurant ever. <laughs> <laughs> And and she she handled it well and got the music turned down for everybody outside. Wow. Okay, that's hilarious. And, and what came out of this though is we shifted our seats around. I sat in front of Jessica's dad, and and he is old school Chinese. He's he's amazing. He took care of his whole family from the time they were children. By whole family, his kids, he or his 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 younger siblings, he took care of. So this wow. is a provider's provider. And, and he's also a, 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 you can call him a retired Tai Chi master. So we can like twist it like in half, like a pretzel. And so our relationship, I love him very dearly, but he's, he's an intimidating guy, at least yeah. in the past. We shuffled the seats around. I'm in this thumping place going, all right, I'm sending love to my family. I'm sending love to everybody here. I'm sending love to everybody with COVID. I'm going to fold this energy in on its half, make a Taurus and playing all these energy games. And this is going to be the most special experience. We ended up sitting across from each other, and it was the best bonding experience I've ever had with him in my life. Interesting. We like came out of that dinner like homies. It was so, so cool. A complete energetic shift from that one wow. meal. It was so cool. So that was letting go of the label and saying, what can we make of this? Right. Well, it's, it's, it's going into love, taking a situation that most people would be miserable about, turning it around you literally were switching sides and um and actually making a, the best bonding experience that you've ever had that's kind of phenomenal i love that story and i love the whole like this is the worst the music is making it the worst <laughs> restaurant i've ever and he did also <laughs> that is so chinese i love it but i mean you've got that in there <laughs> what i love about it is so chinese like i can totally see my mom you know it's just so there's certain things that are just cultural and when i see him it just totally amuses me <laughs> And the waitress, she was she was, she was a, a a a very well seasoned waitress. She took it in stride. She took action. She took care of him. Wow, it was really cool. The that is really right. cool. You, you you know what 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 us kids would normally doing when our parents are saying something like that, <laughs> hiding under the table. Exactly. Now I'm just kind of like she's gonna say what she's because my mom is the only one left now. I'm like, well, cause. He's going to say what she's going to say. And I'm just like, I mean, I don't even try to like cover it up or make it. I just sit there and like, you just live in your statement of life and everyone's just going to work. <laughs> Let everyone fend for themselves. <laughs> oh, that's so lovely. Well, that is great. This is, I love how this, uh, it just, it's always a miracle how these things kind of unfold, Michael, that we're <laughs> We were able to craft a theme out of out of mere strands, little threads. We walk in here not knowing anything, and it's a, the best way. Yeah, it's nicely constructed recipe that people can eat now. <laughs> we have the entree, the dessert, everything. Somewhere in there was a brownie. Yes. <laughs> so, anything else? How would you like to wrap it up, Michael? I guess the themes today are listening and reframing all with love. It is it is listening out of a place of love, listening with your third eye, listening with your heart, and looking at everything as objects in the mirror, not as they appear to be. And it, it doesn't mean we're not facing real challenges. And it doesn't mean that there's not real pain and real grief. That's all real. But what can we do to choose that upper room higher perspective and drop what we can to allow for something even greater. Yeah. And I would say the only thing I would say is to deep inside, because all of this goes down to, do you think the universe is friendly or not? So mm -hmm. if you think that having deep faith that everything here, even the stuff that hurts, you know, my back going out or, or you know, whatever, 
um, having faith that even those things are here to serve. It's about having faith that you are always supported, you're always protected, you're always loved. Even when it doesn't feel like you are, you are. I know who I am in truth. I know how I serve in truth. I know what I am in truth. I am free. I am free. I am free. I have come. I have come. I am come. I am God. God is. God is. God is. God is. Everyone out there, if we didn't even plan this, for everyone out there, this is Michael Sandler and CJ Lou from the Fired Up with CJ show. Saying, be well, have fun, play with all of this, and just love yourself up like there's no, like there is a tomorrow. Just love yourself up and above and beyond all else. Shine bright. <laughs> Shine bright. Woo! Woo! <laughs>